What's going on everybody? You're back with Shades and we're going to continue our let's play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, um, uh, Rin was kind of put on the spot as to like talking with this gallerist and uh, he she seems a little conflicted about it. And now we're just going to talk to her. So anyway, let's get to it, to it, shall we? I catch up to Rin who left the club room just a moment earlier. So we're walking down the stairs to the ground floor while I try to go over Nomiya's passionate speech about art and Rin seems to be lost in thought. Not an unusual state for her, I've learned, but something about her expression makes me feel uneasy. Penny for your thoughts? That'd be too cheap. You're just overpricing your thoughts. I wouldn't be able to sell them anyway. I'm not sure what I'm thinking yet. That'd be fraud too, like stealing candy from a baby. That's theft, not fraud. I have to think about what to think. What I think. Is this about what the teacher said? Getting your work on, put on display and all that? She doesn't answer, but stops in her tracks as we reach the lobby. We're the only people around, so it's very quiet. Footsteps echo from a few floors up as someone hurries along a hallway. Yo, I know that feeling! Uh, uh, I know that feeling of, like, when the, when the school is just empty. Because I, I dormed at the college of the, like, for a few for quite a while. And uh, um, one thing I really, really loved doing, and I wish I could do more of now, but I, since I'm at home more, uh, it's a lot harder for me. Um, but I loved exploring the school at night. Not ex not really, like, like yeah, I guess I'm going to call it exploring, because the campus, even though it was a small college, it's still, like, a really, really expansive campus as far as, like, the buildings go, because there are still parts of that entire uh, uh, campus that I've never been to. So I, I just, like, enjoyed, like, going around. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple other places in that, there's a lot of other places in that building that I've never been to either. But of course, like, there's a, quite a few rooms that are locked at night and you can just go into the hallways. So, like, it, it's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I would love to just explore that free reign, like, like an RPG or something. Anyway, let's get to the game. I feel like something serious is about to happen. I think I'm going to go somewhere else. Somewhere elsewhere. What? I think she's really troubled. Want company? I can't promise much help with the thinking, but it's not like I have much else to do. And I'm supposed to do some light exercise. If you like. Rin leads me outside to the wall behind the dormitories. There's a small back gate there made from the same wrought iron as the main gate. And it leads to the shadowy woodland park behind the school. The gate is rusty, as if it hadn't been seen much use. Did I mute by accident again? Um, however, it sits open, so we pass through. It's not forbidden for students to leave the grounds, but somehow I feel a little uneasy. Ah, oh, forest! A path leads deeper into the forest. Tall Zelkova and maple trees rustle in the wind, their canopies creating patches of chill air hanging in places where the shadows fall. The forest smells strongly of earth. I almost feel cold, even though it's the midsummer day is as hot as ever. Rin trudges ahead like a sleepwalker, sure-footed but with no apparent destination in mind. Her thoughts seem to be somewhere else. I follow a few steps behind, talking, taking more care to watch where my feet land. The path follows the land uphill at a low angle. Sometimes it makes little detours downhill before climbing up back upward. The muted brown and gray trunks line the path on both sides, peppered with ferns and other undergrowth. After a while, I started getting worried. The path is still wide and clear, so there's no chance of getting lost, but it doesn't look like we have any particular destination. There's nothing wrong with a bit of aimless wandering around, but I don't want to go so far that I get too tired to walk back. I'm starting to get a little winded and my legs feel heavy. I want to stop and get a chance to catch my breath and rest my legs, but Rin keeps going. Where are we going? Or are we going anywhere at all? Worry tree. I see. Where exactly is the worry tree? It's just a tree, like this. She stops in front of a particularly large maple that might or might not be the worry tree. Its lush green leaves sway lightly in the breeze, blowing th through the small clearing we entered. I guessed as much. There are people who believe that you must come here to wallow in misery if you are miserable. Only by people, I mean me, and the tree isn't really called anything. So if you're miserable, you talk about talk to a tree about it? No. What? You can't talk to trees? What do you think I am? Crazy? No, I didn't mean it like that. Or maybe you talk to trees. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that you were crazy, even though you probably are if you talk to trees. I wouldn't recommend it in either case. People will think you're a weird person. No, I... Just forget it. She looks mildly confused, for which I don't blame her at all. She tilts her head a little to the side, expression melting back to her usual one. Alright, I'm good at forgetting things. So why are we here? Are you miserable then? I can't read the expression she makes. I hate how bad I am interpreting Rin's mood. 
She doesn't answer right away, as if she herself isn't quite certain of her own mood. The blank stare changes into a more difficult expression as she shovels her weight around. Finally coming to a conclusion, Rin shrugs her shoulders. I've grown to seriously dislike that gesture. It doesn't mean anything. Maybe. I just feel like I'm kind of sinking underwater. I don't know what I should do. I don't know where I should go, that's all. Maybe it's not a big deal, but I thought walking might help. Kind of like if I go somewhere, I would know where I should go. I don't really know if I did it. It really would have made sense if, if I walking had helped decide where to go. So you don't want to try and get an exhibition, or rather you don't know if you do. Can't decide. Rin doesn't say anything for a while, arranging her thoughts in silence. The quiet is broken by bird song from somewhere in the treetops, followed by rustling leaves as a bird takes flight. Maybe. I'm not sure if I can have a thing like that. So far I've only painted for myself. I don't think I could have things on display with the way I am now. This me couldn't do it. Her reason sounds like a weak excuse. I make a trademark friend, but she doesn't notice it. I don't get it. The teacher certainly thinks you could. I don't think he suggested otherwise. It sounds like he's calling in favors from friends, too. I know. He's really done a lot for me. But this might be too much. Becoming someone who can do it might be pretty hard. Maybe I couldn't do it at all. He can't do it for me, and if I let him try, I just sink deeper and deeper. Rin, this is... This is, like, really understandable. Like, it's one of those things where, like, a teacher sees potential in you and is, like, throwing a limb out to see if they can, like, help you reach that potential they see. And, like, it's, it's like, one of those things, like, like it's, this is always a creative problem where it's, like, I, I know I can improve, I want to improve, but I'm not sure if I can right now. And people are helping you and you're just, like, ah. Rin stands in front of the large maple and turns away from me. I want to close the few feet distance between us and... I don't know, my irritation is suddenly gone, and I start feeling sympathetic to her. I know exactly how you feel. Well, maybe I don't, but still. I think I haven't felt like I wasn't actually in control of my life this whole year. I'm just helplessly going along with the flow. Like coming into the school, I didn't really choose it myself, and I certainly didn't choose this time in my life to learn that I have this condition. I can't casually say the word aloud. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's exactly like being underwater. Like I can't even breathe. Ren turns to face me again, a sad expression on her face. Is that why you look so sad all the time? I don't want to look sad like you. Do I look to you like you look to me? I don't look sad all the time. I just, I don't know what I should be feeling, what kind of face I should be making. Me neither. Do I look sad now? Not really. You look like you always do, I think. But I'm sinking. You, I should try to float up like a rubber duck, quack quack all yellow and creepy. <laughs> I should think of a few seconds which, about which direction I should pursue this conversation, and then I realize it doesn't matter. You think rubber ducks are creepy? You don't. I think they look very creepy. Everything that has eyes but isn't alive is very disturbing. The like rubber ducks and reflections in mirrors. She plops down on the forest bed, leaning on the maple she named the worry tree. After wondering what to do for a minute, I sit down too, three feet apart from her. The forest envelops us in its embrace, and its stillness falls upon the two of us. We sit there without speaking for a long while. I can literally feel the time passing. Patch, oops, whoops, I, I did it again. Patches of sunlight litter the small clearing in a pattern that echoes the maple canopies. One of them falls directly on me, warming me all the way to the bone. I wonder what I could do for myself, and maybe for Rin. For now, I just keep watching her from this distance. Sometimes she cranes her neck all the way back, as so much that it almost looks painful, and stares up at the small patch of sky visible past the canopy of the worry tree. Sometimes she just stares blankly ahead, as if seeing something that's just beyond her reach. She keeps whispering to herself, but so quietly that I can't hear her. <sighs> Even though I'm right, I'm sitting right next to her. I can only see her lips moving, like she was in the middle of a distant dream. I realize that right now I can no longer feel any of the intense loneliness I feel at night just before falling asleep. I'm more like Rin than I thought. I can either give up and stay submerged under the weight of all the crap in my life, or I can try to change myself for the better. Yo, that's so true, though. Her decision, her decision is different, yet the same. And unlike her, I know for sure that I can't stay like this forever. I have to change. Uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is I want to be more like Rin. Touched it. Rin could probably do, probably do it, even though she seems to doubt herself. I have no doubts about her strength. She could do it, even if she can't. It makes me feel a little better, too, and I lean back against the tree, breathing out as deeply as if for the first time in a long time. We stay that way in the small clearing until the angle of the sun changes and the chilly sh shadows deepen. No longer warm where we sit, we leave the forest, returning along the same path we took coming in. Wow, well, this picture's prettier than the last one. It doesn't seem like Rin has come to a decision. I wonder if it was a bad idea for me to come along. 
It's all right. I don't mind. I'm sure the trees and dirt and rocks won't mind either. Do you mind? No, not at all. I think it helped me too. Well, we walk back toward the dormitories. The sky has changed to a deep ultramarine. The first summer star stars twinkle softly from between the spots in the canopy, barely visible like tiny fireflies. I become very self-conscious of our rent's presence. I haven't thought about much girl. I haven't thought much about girls since the first things fell apart with Iwanago. Eh, I wouldn't say it fell apart. More like you died. You actually died. <laughs> The kind of, this is kind of the same situation as then, but to be honest, I don't really, I don't think it really counts for me for much. Not with Rin, and yet it feels like walking next to her, even if it isn't anything more than this. At first, I think Rin agitated me quite a bit with her unpredictable behavior, but recently, I haven't felt, haven't had to be on my toes as much. I haven't managed to let myself go a little. It makes me feel satisfied, even though ultimately, I think it's more thanks to Rin than myself. She seems disinterested in a huge number of things, but something in her makes me try harder than I normally would. It's not that I want to impress her. I think that truly impressing Rin would take near human efforts just because of how she is. Instead, it's because there is this relentless feeling inside of me that just should, I shouldn't let Rin down. It's really weird. I wonder why I started thinking like that. I don't even know what sort of expectation she has about pretty much anything. So how could I let her down? Rin has this unassuming air about her, and she doesn't really talk about stuff very often. Even today's confession of her self-doubt caught me a little bit off guard. I feel like I want to talk more with her. The realization suddenly dawns me that Rin is basically the only person I talk to nowadays. Apart from whenever I have to endure from Shizune, Misha, or Kenji. I feel slightly depressed. In front of the dormitories, as if summoned by my dark thoughts, we run into Kenji himself. No! Why can't he die? It feels very odd seeing him outside, breathing fresh outdoor air. At least it's already dusk. I, I partially expect Kenji would disintegrate upon direct explosion of the sun. Kenji himself seems very insecure as well, standing around looking like he's waiting for something, but doesn't know himself what it might be. Hey Kenji, what are you doing? Hello. Who are you? It's me, Hisao. Um, I'm not sure if you know Tezuka from Class 3-4. From his face I can see not only that he doesn't know Rin, he also can't see her from this short distance. Oh, what's up dudes? Kenji sticks his hand enthusiastically forward, almost straight into Rin's stomach. Rin looks at his outstretched hand in confusion until Kenji clears his throat and retracts his hand. There is something almost cool almost cool that he manages to do in, with social awkwardness. It's not like I'm the most suave man on the planet, but I don't think I'll ever be able to ever, even approach Kenji's level. Kenji's on his own planet, okay? He's dumb. He's so fucking dumb, I hate him. I want him to die. I hate him so much. I, th I think I respect Kenji a little bit more. So, are you waiting for someone? He leaves- oops. He loses it closer and lowers his voice in an agitated whisper. I can see his facial muscles twitching. Come on, man. You know I can't talk about tough stuff here in public. They might be listening. I'm going to have to go pick up some stuff from somewhere. I don't want those snooping student council hags to get on the case. Also, don't trust your friend. Nothing personal. Are you sure he's trustworthy? I briefly considered telling Kenji about Rin's gender, but it might end up badly for one or both of them. I decided against it. Yeah, I'm sure. <sighs> That's so true. He turns from me to Rin, and I immediately get the feeling that I have to prevent them from talking to each other with whatever means necessary. However, there is little I can do now, apart from physical violence. In that case, would you be interested in knowing about the worst threat to mankind since they invented ve ve vegetarianism? Oh no. Oh no. I don't want to deal with this. Oh, I don't like Kenji. Kenji's the worst. He sounds like a vacuum cleaner salesman. I thought it was Sunday. I see that you're not in the know. Yeah, man, I'm talking about man-eating cows here. Very few people know what know what I know. I'm not, so I'm not surprised. We can't talk here, but if you like a pamphlet, come to my room after curfew on Mondays or Wednesdays. He suddenly reaches into his pocket and draws out a ballpoint pen and what looks like a convenience store receipt. Kenji furiously scribbles on the scrap paper and thrusts it towards Rin. Here's the password. Memorize it, then eradicate any trace of this document. Eat it, burn it, dissolve it in acid, whatever. I take the receipt from Kenji as Rin is unable to do so and glance at it. It is indeed a receipt, apparently for two rice balls and five boxes of matches. I hope he's not planning to burn anything down. On this side, there isn't just one word. Why? Why? I showed it to Rin too, but she shows no reaction. Thank you. Yo, Hisa, you still in that club? The Club of Dark Arts? Fine art, yeah. Why? I actually just had a meeting today. 
Still get your wits about you? No shady mind tricks going on? Nothing personal, man, but I still have to be on top of things. Can't get caught with my pants down. Speaking of which, you should really take your showers a bit later. Gotta respect the personal space. Nothing personal. Shut up, Kenji! You don't respect anyone's personal space. I'm gonna kill you. Kenji looks around as if he heard something and then strains his jacket. Okay, gotta scoot now before it gets too late. Later, dudes. Good luck. I hate him so much. Just so much. Kenji takes off rapidly toward the main gate. Rin looks after him, frowning. We watch after Kenji's diminishing figure in silence. What's wrong with him? Technically speaking, I think he's legally blind. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Not gonna have the part just yet, but, um... Jesus Christ, I hate Kenji. Literally, if he, if he wasn't the character, this, this game wouldn't... Oh, no! We're gonna read the letter! No! I can immediately tell from the envelope that it's not about official matters of any sort. Some, someone actually wrote me an old-fashioned handwritten paper letter. Who, bother doing, who bothers doing something like that on this day and age anyway? Yet, as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, there's definitely a letter li lying on my desk. As classes for the day are over, still feeling pretty full from the big lunch I had ex unexpectedly eating at the cafeteria, I return to my dorm planning on finishing my homework and probably skipping dinner or at least just eating light. I feel like I need to eat less than I used to. Maybe I don't need that much energy now that I don't do much beyond reading. However, the letter on my desk has naturally caught my interest. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamako, so I'd feel even special if it wasn't something as rare as a handwritten letter. What causes me even more trepidation is the name of the sender, written neatly on the back of the envelope. It's written in Japanese characters that I can't understand. Iwanako. I have no idea why she would write me. I haven't been in contact with anyone from the old school since I transferred, and Iwanako is the last person I expect to want to write me a letter. Last time I saw Iwanako was terribly awkward, embarrassingly so. She came to my hospital room, peeled me an apple out of courtesy, and then we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye and didn't look me in the eye when she closed the door. It might have been a natural end to a series of visits that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visited me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her, but something stopped me every time. Every time that I didn't speak made the next time even harder. Ugh, I can never understand this feeling, because, like, well, I can't say I could never understand the feeling. It's just I've never been in a situation where, um, like, I couldn't, like, talk to someone, and I would regularly see them. Iwanako had always this aura of fragility around her, as if she'd shattered to pieces at the slightest disturbance. Initially, I think it might have been that delicacy that attracted me to her, but after what happened back then, it feels as if she really had shattered. She looked so sad that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her, and I never could figure out the right words to say. I told her that it wasn't her fault. She nodded and I didn't really think she understood that if it hadn't been that, that sooner or later something else would have made my heart give out. She did look so hopelessly sad every time she opened that door and entered my room, so I never managed to say things I wanted to say. In the end, that might have hurt her even more. Carefully open the envelope and draw out the folded letter from within. Ooh. What time is it? I have time! Dear Hisao, how are you? I hope you're well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year, so we're pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The one among third year seems to be very anxious about the final exams, even though they are so far away. The teachers are badgering us about it all the time, even old Mr. Tajibana, who is, by the way, our homeroom teacher this year. Would you believe it? I'm sure he retired after our second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. Uh, I think well, things like that are the main reason why the moods among us third years are so nervous. I must be admit I'm somehow losing confidence myself as well, even though I've always fed reasonably well at exams. It's so weird to think we're already seniors, isn't it? Time really has flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm running to you because I feel like there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret I wasn't able to say them in person and I have no excuse for it. The truth is that sometimes when I visit you at the hospital it made me worried about you. I'm not talking about your health. You seem to become more distant and disheartened. It was natural after something like that happened, I'm sure, but somehow I got the feeling that you had given up on something back then. Happiness, maybe. I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I really couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered most. Even though I like you so much, at least now I can be more honest. I 
I, if I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had mani just managed to say something. I hope you managed to get on. I hope you managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, I, it also feels more final somehow. I wonder if we will ever meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't. Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, you and Apple. After finishing the reading the letter, I folded like I was and placed it on my desk. I don't know what to think of this. I feel empty and confused. Why now after all this time? Just yesterday I decided to let, let myself stay like this, that I'd try to get on top of my own life. Reading this letter just reminds me what, of what could have been. Of course I wish I didn't have, it, have to be here. I didn't want to be the same class with Iwanako again. Maybe we could try talk, we would talk every now and, and go on dates. My life didn't go like that. I didn't really need to be reminded of this. You would not need to write this letter for her own sake, and I'm glad for her that she could. But it would have been better if I hadn't read it. Of course, she is right. I thought of the same thing yesterday. I had fallen to a pit of depression, and now I have to try and climb out. I grab a page out of my notebook, and after a moment, think about how to frame my words. Write a shorter play to Iwanako. I find it difficult to really be honest with her, but at least I could try to appear somewhat convincing. I don't write to her about Yamako at all. I thought she'll write me again, but I don't feel at all sad about it. I fold my own letter to her, and ha as I have no envelope, and said next to Iwanako's. I'll mail it to her later. Then I lie back on my bed, looking at the monotone gray ceiling. A bird sings out of my window as a sudden gust of wind flutters my curtains, and summer after it feels, feels still, as if time had stopped for a brief moment. I think about all the things I've lost and will never regain. Well, that's depressing! And it's a perfect cut, because I can end the part here. But, yeah, okay. Um, it, it always seems to me that, like, on the brink of Hisao um, realizing that um, uh, he needs to get out of his own funk and real and like fix his life on his own terms, um, Iwanako sends the letter. Um, it's not a bad thing that she sends the letter. I mean, yes, he's right. It was probably for herself rather than for him or for them. But um, it's one of those things where I'm just like, it sucks. It really sucks because... Um, this this scenario that he's in could happen to anyone, and it probably has happened to many people in the real world. It just sucks because like you can't really change um, what what happens to you. You can only change how you respond to it. And he response to him uh, coming down with arrhythmia is that um, hey, I'm going to be depressed for a while. Uh, with prior experience to that, he probably would have handled it better. But uh, he, he can't. He can't change that. So he can only change how he presses forward. And I think he's learned that. I think that's what he learns in all the paths. So, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me from this series, hit that subscribe button. And you're not exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. See you guys next time. Bye.